what? You have to receive. Believe, but what? You have to receive in order to become what? A child of God. Becoming a Christ follower, a Christian, a member of Team Jesus is as easy as A, B, C. Look at this with me. The ABCs to becoming a Christian, to becoming a child of God. A, write this down if you're taking notes. This is very important. It's as easy as A, B, C. A means admit. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit you need saved. Admit that you've lived a life of rebellion, disobedience. And as a result of your sins, you deserve, you've earned what? You've earned eternal life away from God in a place called hell. Romans 3.23 says this, All, that's you and I, all of us, not a single one of us left out. All have what? Sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, the one thing we have in common is we've all blown it. We've all thought a bad thought. We've all said a bad word. We've all done a bad deed. We all deserve what? We all deserve hell. That's really what we've earned. I mean, if we're going to get what we've got coming to us, it's going to be bad. I mean, we're not going to want it. We've all sinned and what? Fallen short of the glory of God. The, the glory of God is what? The presence of God. Heaven. We've fallen short. Romans 6, 23 tells us how. The wages of sin is death. And that's physical death and spiritual death. The wages of sin. In other words, the payment of sin is death. And here's the thing. What that means is, the more we sin, the more we deserve what? Death. In other words, the more you work for your boss, the more you deserve your, your paycheck. The more money you deserve. You got it coming to you. It's your wage. Well, the more you sin, the more you deserve it. The more you deserve what you got coming for you. And that's not good. That's judgment. That's fire and brimstone stuff here. The wages of sin is what? It's death. It's physical death and spiritual death. Apart from what? From life. From God. That's the bad news. And we just need to what? We need to admit it. Yep, I'm a sinner. I deserve eternal life away from God in a place called hell. That's what I deserve. B. Let's look at the B. B means believe. Believe Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father to what? To die in your place in order to save you from spending eternity in hell. Jesus lived a perfect life, died a sacrificial death, died as a substitute. He took your place and my place on Calvary's cross so that you and I might have eternal life. Because really, it's us who should have died. It's us who should have been judged for the sins that we committed. Jesus came not only to die for you, but to give you eternal life in a place called heaven. Now, let's talk about heaven. Heaven is a place where God's love, joy, and peace are experienced and encountered by every person who believes in Jesus Christ. Heaven is a place of eternal pleasure, eternal happiness beyond our wildest dreams and imaginations. We can't even fathom heaven. Heaven is where our faith will become sight. You'll actually see the things that we're talking about. Streets of gold, gates of pearl, the throne of God. You'll get to see God the Father, just like you're looking at me and I'm looking at you right now. You'll get to meet Jesus face to face. Heaven is a place where every person that is in their right mind wants to live for all eternity. But here's the reality, only a few, only a few will go to. Why? Because they don't admit and they don't believe. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be what? You'll be saved. We have to admit that we need saved. Then we have to believe that Jesus saved us. We believe what? The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who paid the price for our sins. I got saved, oh my, uh, almost close to 40 years ago now. On this next verse here. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I heard a preacher preach this at the age of six. At a revival meeting, my father was hosting his little Methodist church. And the preacher was preaching on Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. He said this, For it is by God's grace that you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God. 
not by works so that no one can boast. I tell you what, that word hit my heart and I recognized for the first time in my life I needed a Savior. I, I, needed, I needed saved. And it wasn't going to be through anything I did. It wasn't through works. We're not saved by works. We're saved for works. We're saved by what? By grace through faith. By grace through faith. In who? In Jesus Christ. By believing. By believing Jesus died for us. A means admit. B means believe. C means confess. We must confess after we admit and believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lived, died, and was resurrected back to eternal life for you and I. Upon Christ's resurrection, God placed all power and authority under his feet for your salvation, my salvation, and the salvation of the entire world. Jesus Christ will someday return, and I believe very soon, to earth to set up God's eternal kingdom of love, joy, and peace. And we want to be a part of that. And I want you to be a part of that. And every person here at the tabernacle and those watching online, we want you to be a part of that. But we're not saved by admitting we're sinners alone. We're not saved by simply believing that there's a God. We're saved by what? Admitting, believing, and confessing. You know, an interesting scripture says that the devil even believes. Isn't that interesting? I know a lot of people, they tell me all this time, oh, 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 you know, Pastor Tim or Dr. Farrell, I believe, I believe in a God. I believe there's a God. I said, well, well, my land, the devil believes in a God. And he's going straight to hell. So it's not enough just to believe, right? It's not just, just to admit you need saved. It's not admit, you know, it's a good thing to admit you need some help. You need a savior. But not every alcoholic that admits they're alcoholic gets delivered. That's a big step. You have to admit you're an alcoholic. But just because you admit you're an alcoholic doesn't mean, well, well, now I'm delivered from alcohol. No, 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 no. That's the first step. So we need to admit we're, we need saved. Then we need to believe Jesus provided the grace by which we can be saved. But step number three is the clincher. It's the deal. It's the deal breaker. And we must what? We must confess with our mouths. What? The Lord Jesus Christ. Confession with one's heart and with one's lips must be made. Notice, unto salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10, verse 13 says this. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. That's it. Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You will be saved. Now, the King James, like the King James, it says shall. You shall be saved. That's the affirmative. That's, there's no doubt about it. For it is with your heart, here it is, it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, but it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. For everyone who what? Calls on the name of the Lord will or shall be saved. Did you notice that? It's not everyone who admits they're a sinner. It's not everyone who believes there's a God or even believes in Jesus. It's only those who admit, believe, and confess. Confess Jesus Christ. Jesus, I confess that you are Lord. Jesus, I confess that you're a Savior. You're my Savior. I confess you now as my personal Lord and Savior. That's when you become saved. It's with your mouth that you confess unto salvation. Everyone, and that's the good news, it's open for everyone. The doors of salvation are open to everyone. The gift of God's Son is a gift given for everyone. And if you'll call on the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus... You'll be what? You shall be saved. Look at this verse, Matthew 12, 37. It says these words. By your words are you justified, and by your words you're condemned. Isn't that interesting? By what you and I say about Jesus. Well, I don't believe in Jesus. That's fine. You'll go to hell. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Then, then, then you don't have Jesus, and there's only, one, there's only two ways to go after you breathe your last breath. It's up or down. If you confess, what? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, what? You'll be justified, because it's by your words you're justified, by your words are you condemned. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us the power of life and death are in the tongue. In the tongue. By what you and I say, by what you and I confess over our lives, 
we receive life or we receive what? We receive death. Now, Jesus said to Nicodemus back in John 3, verse 7, these words, he said, you must be born again. You must be born again. In other words, the most, Jesus was saying this, let me put it in my vernacular. The most important thing you'll ever do in your life is become born again. The most important thing you'll ever do in your life is become a Christian, to become saved. If you don't do anything else in this life, you must be born again. Now, it's a good idea to come to church. It's a good idea to pray. It's a good idea to read God's Word. It's a good idea to witness to your friends and family members. Amen? It's a good idea to take a shower and to clean your car and, and, and to brush your teeth. That's, those are all good ideas, and we want you to do them, especially your neighbor, right? But you must be born again. I mean, if we don't get it, this is the main thing. This is the jewel. This is the, this is the core of Christianity is what? Is you must receive Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Because if you, here's the thing. Let me get real, real real with you. With you. And I'm going to be liberal here. Five seconds after you die, and after I die, because I'm going to die too. Five seconds, and that's being liberal. Because I don't think it's going to take but about one. Five seconds after you your last breath, all this stuff right here, it won't matter. It won't matter what kind of car you drove, clothes you, the jewelry you wore, the, how much hair you had or didn't have. <laughs> all the clothes we, are you with me? Cowboy boots you wore, it's not going to matter. The job you had, amen? All this stuff we get all worried about. Five seconds after we die, none of it's going to matter. The only thing that's going to matter after you and I breathe our last breath is what? Did we receive Jesus Christ or not? For everyone who believes in Jesus, he who has a son has life. He who does not have a son of God does not have a That's all really, it's all going to matter. That's all that's going to matter. So here's the thing, and that's what I think the enemy, if I was the enemy, he's doing a pretty good job of this. I get us focused on all this other stuff. I get us focused on, on all this other stuff and keep the main thing away from people. Don't tell them, don't tell them what the main thing is. The heart of the gospel is salvation. Now, part of that, salvation, the good news of the benefits is healing, deliverance, peace, love. I mean, that's the, that's the icing on the cake. The cake, salvation. Jesus said it very clearly, John 3, verse 7, you must, must be born again. I mean, you got to be born again. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, how do you become born again? Admit, believe, and confess. And you simply do that, very simply, through praying what I call the prayer of salvation. The prayer of salvation is something that I've had the honor of praying with and for hundreds of people. And some of you have prayed the prayer as well and have led others in this prayer. But I would like for us, and if you're here today and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you admit you're a sinner, you believe Jesus died for your sins, and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, you'd like to pray the prayer of salvation, I, it's up on the screen, and here's what I want us to do. Uh, and Brother Mike, why don't you just zoom in on the, on, the, on the prayer up there so that people watching online can pray it with us as well. Here's what I'd like us to do. Don't you dare pray this in your heart, because we have to confess it. So here's what I want to do. If you're here today, even if you've prayed this prayer like me 40 years ago, I want us to pray it out loud today, just to reaffirm our faith, to renew our faith, our, uh, our commitment, our belief in Jesus Christ. Can we do that today? Let's just all pray it out loud if, if you would like to do that today. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, pray with me. I come to you now just as I am, a sinner in need of your mercy and grace. Forgive me of all my sins of disobedience and rebellion against you. Cleanse and deliver me from all my sins separating me from you. Wash me in your love. Come into my heart and life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Holy Spirit, help me live for God and His will all the days of my life. I pray this in the mighty, strong, and victorious name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, Amen. 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 Amen.
Praise God. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer with us, and you're here today at the tab or you're watching online, I want to do something in closing. I want to welcome you to Team Jesus. You've just qualified to live the victorious life. You're on Team Jesus. You're a member of the family of God. And if you go out here and you drop dead 30 seconds later, you're going to heaven. You're going to heaven. You need not fear your future. And I joined the apostle Peter and Paul in saying these words. I love this. 1 Peter 1 says this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us, that's you, new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into, here it is, here's what you got, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded, you're shielded by God's power, until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Though you've not seen Him, you love Him. Even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Colossians 1, 12-14 says, Giving thanks to the Father... Here it is. Who has qualified you? Who qualified you? God did. He qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into what? The kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have, and I'm talking about right now, have what? Redemption, the forgiveness of, of sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, we shout, we shout for a lot of, of, of lesser things. Amen. We clap for a lot of lesser things. Well, my God, you've been saved from your sins for all eternity, past, present, and future through what? Through admitting, believing, and confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. My friends, your, your eternity is, is as good as if you're already there. You're as, you're as bound for heaven as if you're already there. Right now, the angels are going to work and preparing a place for you to live in an eternal home in the city of God, the new Zion. Now, again, we don't qualify through anything we do. We qualify by what? By putting our faith and trust in Jesus. We're not saved by works. We're saved what? For, for good works. So go out and live a good life. Help others. Lead them to faith in Jesus. Bring them to church. Begin reading your Bible and pray and that's all that stuff we want to do. Now, if you receive Jesus Christ today as a personal Lord and Savior, I want to do a couple things. Number one, take out the connection card in the program that you were given. And on the back side, it says, my decision today. If you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior for the first time, mark that box. All right? And turn it in. And uh, we just want to celebrate that with you. Maybe you're here today and you renewed your faith. You know, maybe there was a day you... You, you made faith, but you needed to renew it. You needed to rededicate. Mark that. Mark that. Let us know. And we want to celebrate that with you. Now, the second thing I want you to do is this, is you need to become water baptized. Water baptism will not save you. You're saved by grace through faith in Jesus. But water baptism is the public profession of faith. You're standing up before everybody else and you're saying, hey, I believe in Jesus. Uh, let me say this, because I just feel led to say it in closing. Your faith in Jesus is a personal faith, not a private faith. It's personal, but it's never meant to remain private. Your personal faith is meant to go public. All right? Everybody you know needs to know you're a Christian. They need to, they need to hear, I'm a Christian. They need to see you going to church. They need to see you praying. They need to see you reading the Word. You, you, there ought to be some evidence if you are tried and convicted that you're a Christian. All right? So your, your faith is personal but not private. You make your personal faith public by being water baptized. That's what, that's what water baptism is all about. It's just, it's just making a public declaration and it just seals the deal. And we're going to have a water baptism service coming up here in September 
on September 11th, Sunday, September 11th, right after church. We're going to have a potluck at our home, and we've got a great big pool, and uh, we're going to water baptize people. So if you'd like to become baptized uh, in water as a public profession of your personal faith, we want to do that today. Uh, and you can, you can mark that on, on the uh, card, say, Pastor Tim, I'd like to be baptized. And we would love to do that. And we're all going to celebrate that with you today. So in closing, let me pray for you. And, uh, and then we'll continue worshiping God here this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago to die upon Calvary's cross for our sins, past, present, and future. And Lord, right now I pray for every person here at the tab and every person that's watching online today that prayed that prayer with me. Lord, confirm by your Spirit in their heart of hearts that they are a son or a daughter of God, that they've been saved, that they've been forgiven, healed and delivered, transferred from the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen.